Welcome to the IME Air Motor Virtual Machining Project Spring 2020. In this video segment, we're going to produce the cylinder. Looking at the engineering drawing for the cylinder, we notice that the material is A356 aluminum, which means we're going to start off with some sort of casting. In this case, we're going to use a sand casting to go ahead and act as our workpiece blank. We're going to take that sand casting and we're going to machine the specific features in it. Now, looking at that engineering drawing's front view, you notice we have a 0.750 plus or minus 2 thou diameter hole. Because we have such a tight tolerance hole, we're not going to rely on a drill bit to go ahead and, and make the final dimensions for that hole. We're going to use a drill bit to get very close to the final size and then ream it to size. Now, looking at the top view on the engineering drawing, you see that we have a machined diameter, a slot in, in the cylinder as well, and a tapped hole. Also, we have a pocket for the exhaust to, to occur in the air motor. That's what that larger pocket is. And then we have a 0.228 by 900 thou deep hole that's going to allow air to enter into the air motor. If the air can't enter into the air motor through that hole, the air motor won't actually run. Looking at the top of the air motor, we have a machine diameter of a 1.40 that goes down 0.375. That just cleans up the, the top of the air motor in order to make it look good instead of having just a raw cast top. So let's come up with a routing for this. Let's check out our routing. So for the first operation or operation 10, we're gonna use that Haas CNC lathe to go ahead and center drill, drill and ream the piston hole. But before we do that, we're actually going to face and turn the outside diameter so we can have a nice machine surface to grab onto in subsequent operations. So after machining it in the CNC lathe, we're gonna move on and we're gonna to go to the Haas CNC manning mill number two, where we face the top to length, that'll end up getting the final length of the 4.8 plus or minus 100 thou, and machine that 1.40 diameter in the part 0.375 deep, not to mention to chamfer the top of the part because you don't want to go ahead and have a sharp air motor sitting on your desk. Now, after the Hosman email number two, we're going to move on to operation number 30, where we hold on to that machine diameter that we, that we machined in the first operation and go ahead and pocket out the, the exhaust holes. We're going to drill and tap the quarter 20 thread, and then we're going to drill the 0.228 hole 900 thou deep so the air motor can get air into the in into the actual motor. Finally, when we're done with the fourth axis mini mill, the second half actually of the fourth axis mini mill is going to rotate around and engrave cow poly on the front face of the part, which cannot be seen actually in the engineering drawing. Now, in operation 40, we're going to go ahead and finish up the part by milling a slot and chamfering the slot there that you see that's 1.25 in length and 0 0.40 in width. So let's go on and perform these operations. Operation number 10 is performed on the Haas ST10 turning center. What we're going to do in this operation is we're going to hold on to the part using a fixture. Notice the CNC lathe does not have a three jaw chuck or a collet chuck on it, it's got a specially designed fixture to hold the irregularly shaped casting. When we put the part in the fixture, we go ahead and we tighten the set screws down with a T-handle wrench first. And to ensure that we put enough torque on those set screws, we're going to go ahead and use the torque wrench to tighten it down to 140 inch-pounds of torque, those set screws. We're going to practice a double torquing method where we torque, we torque both set screws then we go back and we check the set screws a second time to make sure they've reached their torque. Sometimes the casting shifts a little bit when torquing it down and we actually don't get the proper torque on it because it loosens itself when we torque the second bolt. Hence, we double torque it and make sure that it's at that, that 140 inch pounds value before we close the door or before we check it with the gauge. Now, when we're ready to go, we have to make sure that the part's not sticking out of the fixture too far or else the CNC lathe will go ahead and crash when it comes in to face the part. So we use the, the height gauge check to double check that we have a little bit of space in between the casting and the actual gauge that there before we, before we run apart. 
We do this on every single part just to make sure that we don't crash that CNC lathe, which could cause hundreds to thousands of dollars worth of damage. Now, when we're ready to go and the part's properly installed in the fixture and it's been checked with the height gauge, we go ahead and we close the doors, double check that the proper CNC program is loaded, and press the green cycle start button. The first step is it takes an OD facing and turning tool. It has a, a CNMG 432B insert in it, and it goes ahead and it faces the part. Then it turns the 1.05 diameter down to, to the appropriate length. When the turning and facing is all done, it'll go ahead and bring in a spot drill or a center drill in this case, the number eight center drill to center the hole that we're gonna drill in the part. After the center drill, we bring in a 47 64ths through spindle coolant drill. What that means is this coolant goes through the actual drill and spits out the, the tip of the drill in order to help cool and lubricate the tool during machining. So this is a pretty large hole to drill in one step. So once we're done with that 47 64ths drill, we bring in a three quarter inch reamer, a 0.750 inch high speed steel reamer in order to ream the hole out to 0 0.750 in diameter and giving us that plus or minus two thou tolerance. Now that the, all the machining operations are over, we open the door, we blow off the part, and we go ahead and double check that the parts critical tolerance is machined with intolerance by using the cylinder bore go no go gauge. So the gauge should be inserted into the hole. If it doesn't fit, it's the wrong size. So we have a go no go gauge for that cylinder bore. Now that it passes this inspection and during this operation, we're going to go on to the next operation. If it didn't pass this operation and we didn't inspect it here with that go no go gauge, we could be making a part all the way down the line and we would be adding money to, we would be wasting money by not scrapping the part during this operation. So join me for the next operation. In the next operation, we're actually gonna skip to operation number 30 instead of doing 20 in order because it's, this is another parallel operation that the Air Motor Project has. We can do 20 and 30 in any order as long as we do them both before we go on to operation number 40. So in operation number 30, we're gonna go ahead and use the fourth axis mini mill to hold onto our part. We're gonna end up machining two sides of the part in this operation. The first side is gonna go ahead and, and mill the valve face and the, uh, the cylinder exhaust port, and then drill and tap some holes. The second side is gonna go ahead and engrave on the fourth axis, Cal Poly Slow in it. Now to hold onto this part in the fourth axis, we're gonna use the, the three jaw chuck with a little stop. So we go ahead and we align the part up in the three jaw chuck by holding it onto the machine bore that was machined in operation number 10. And then we line it up to the stop that we have on that, on that three jaw chuck. Once the part is tightened with, with the chuck key, we go ahead and we close the doors to the CNC mill and we double check that the correct cylinder program has been loaded. This machine processes both frames and cylinders, so we wanna go ahead and make sure that the appropriate program is loaded. Once we know that the cylinder program is loaded, we press cycle start, and a 3 8 inch end mill comes in and face mills the top of the, of the sand casting. So we're using a small 3 8 end mill to face mill the top and get a nice machine surface that will go ahead and ride with the other machine surface on the frame. Now, once, that the, once the top surface has been face milled, the end mill is gonna come in and machine the, the cylinder exhaust port. So it machines a large pocket in the casting for the exhaust to, to occur during the air motor, air motor's operation cycle. At that point, once the exhaust port the pocket has been milled, a center drill comes in and locates the two holes that are gonna be on this side of the part. After the center drill, we use a drill to drill the hole for the tap and then drill the hole for the exhaust port in, in the air motor. At this point, the last step here on this side is to go ahead and tap the thread, the quarter 20 thread in the air motor cylinder. Now the tap is a roll form tap in this case, so it has a slightly different drill size than the original, than uh, a machine tap would. Now, when this side's all done, the fourth axis rotates 180 degrees to the other side, and we, we come in with a, 
with a carbide insert tool, we have an insert end mill to go ahead and machine a surface to engrave Cal Poly on. Once this surface has been machined, we, we bring out the split point engraving tool to go ahead and engrave Cal Poly slow onto the front face of the air motor so we can be proud of where we, where we manufactured this workpiece. Now, when the machining's all done, we open the doors, we blow off the part, and we take it out of the fixture, the three-jaw chuck. It's not technically a fixture, although it's got a little stop on it. So it's a general work holding with a stop. And then to ensure that we've created all the features correctly during this operation, we go ahead and we use the go no-go gauge for the air port hole. And you'll see that we have a go and a no-go side. Then we also use the quarter 20 go no-go gauge to make sure we've made a quarter 20 to be hole to the appropriate sizes. Once we've inspected it during this operation, we go ahead and we go on to the next operation, which in this case, we're gonna do 20. So we did 30 instead of 20 first to show you the differences of a parallel operation. Our next step is to go ahead and machine operation 20 after we just finished operation 30. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and use the Haas CNC mini mill number two, where we hold on to the workpiece on the same machine diameter that we held on to it in operation number 30 that was created in operation number 10. So we're holding onto the same machine surfaces all the way through the, the, the different CNC operations here. Now in operation number 20, we're gonna use a one and three sixty-fourths collet to go ahead and hold onto that machine diameter. So we have a collet chuck in the CNC mill to hold onto the actual part that holds it vertically so we can face mill, contour, and chamfer the part. So we put the part in the CNC collet chuck and we go ahead and we, we tap it down. And once we tap it down, we go ahead and we tap down the arm in the front of the collet chuck to go ahead and tighten the collet onto that workpiece and hold onto it. At this point, we're gonna close the doors. We're going to make sure the appropriate CNC program has been loaded in the CNC machine and press the green cycle start button. When, when that occurs, the two inch face mill comes in and face mills the top of the workpiece. Now, once we face it to the appropriate height, the half inch four flute carbide end mill comes in and contours around the outside of the casting, making the 1.40 diameter contour on the part. Now, because we don't wanna go ahead and cut people, we're gonna go ahead and chamfer that work well, surface and put in the 50 thou by 45 degree chamfer on the top of, of the air motor cylinder. To do this, we're using the 90 degree spot drill. So we have a 5 8 90 degree spot drill, go ahead and chamfer, chamfer the part. Now, once this operation is completely done, we're gonna open the doors, blow off the part, and take the part out of the collet chuck. Because this is a purely cosmetic item on the air motor, we're not gonna worry about inspecting it with, with, any, with any inspection equipment at this point. We can measure it on the first article to make sure it's the right size, but after that, we're just gonna visually look at it to make sure we've cleaned up the top surface and fully contoured the part and chamfered the part. In this last operation, we're gonna go ahead and mill the slot for the piston and the dowel pin and then chamfer the slot. So we have to make a 40 thou wide, or 400 thou wide slot that goes back 1.25. To do this, we're gonna hold it in a, a jaw set that has a stop on it. So we have a custom soft jaw set, technically, even though a machine profile isn't in it, we just have a, a pin in it to go ahead and locate off the back machine surface of the part. But we put the part in it with the, the holes facing upwards and the exhaust ports facing upwards and slide it back against the pin. We then tighten the, the vise on the, on the cylinder and use the torque wrench to make sure it's nice and tight. At this point, we close the doors we verify that the appropriate CNC program is loaded and we press the green cycle start button. What happens is a 3 8 inch three fluid end mill comes in and it makes the uh, 0.375 wide slot cut. On the way back out, it adjusts itself 25 thou over and it goes ahead and it makes that 400 thou wide slot. At this point, we bring in the 5 8 90 degree spot drill in order to make the 45 degree chamfer on the part. So we're using spot drills to chamfer the part in this operation as well. 
Once we've created that chamfer, we take the we open the doors, we blow off the, the workpiece, and we take it out of the vise. And at this point, we go ahead and we can go on the, the first article inspection to make sure the part passes all of the critical measurements. Once we're done with the, the major first article inspection, we know the manufacturing process has been set up correctly and we can run the parts in production, uh, basically in lots. So that's the process for machining the cylinder on the air motor project.